Next presentation is uh, Dr. Sue. And the reason we invited him um, is because of recent, there's been developments in ability to detect multiple cancers uh, using blood-based assays. And so the concept for our melanoma patients is, is, is this worthwhile that perhaps we could detect another cancer down the road um, using one of these blood-based assays? So Dr. Sue is gonna talk a little bit about this. This is an evolving science. So thank you very much, Eric. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Dr. Esner. Uh, Eric Sue here. I'm a general internist in private practice in Century City, and I am so excited to be here to share my experience uh, with gallery cancer screening as a first of its kind multi-cancer early detection tool. It's a blood test that can screen for 50 different kinds of cancer. Uh, I only became aware of gallery cancer screening two years ago in September of 2022 when a patient of mine asked me about it, and I had never heard about it before. So we reached out to the company, asked them to give us a presentation, and I'm gonna be honest with you, when I first heard a lot of the information that I'm gonna to present to you today, one of the first questions that went through my mind is, is this gonna be the next Theranos? Uh, where it's a lot of smoke, but is the technology actually there? And I'm gonna tell you that I stand here today, two years later, I've ordered 630 gallery cancer screenings and I've had six true positive gallery tests. Uh, I think it's incredible stuff, and I think it's only going to get better. Um, and so I'm, I'm hopeful that I'm going to be able to impart some of that experience with you um, so that it can be meaningful. Um, now, I do need to disclose that I have nothing to disclose. Uh, <laughs> I've never spoken for a company before, um, but I've become so impassioned with this um, that I, I offered to become a speaker, and my only stipulation in, in offering to become a speaker is that I don't want any honorary, I don't want any travel reimbursement. This is about patient education and letting people know that something like this is available, um, because I think it's incredible stuff. Um, and so I did want to let you know that up front. I think it's pretty safe to say that all of us are afraid of cancer. We know that one in two men and one in three women are gonna get cancer in their lifetime. And we know that one in five people are gonna die from cancer. Um, and uh, with the five cancer screening guidelines we have available, mammograms for breast cancer, Aspirin for, cer for cervical cancer, colonoscopies for colon cancer, low-dose CT scans for former and current smokers, and PSA checks for prostate cancer, those five measures. We're only able to capture 29% of the cancers that people are dying from. At least 71% of the cancers that people are dying from that we have no available cancer screening measures for. We're not doing great. Um, and I need to be careful not to minimize any of the tremendous strides we've made uh, for, in the cancer world from a diagnostic and therapeutic standpoint. Um, but this begs the question, man, is there any way we can be doing better from a proactive standpoint? where we're not reactively treating cancers, but if we're actively, proactively screening for them up front. And I think that that's where gallery cancer screening potentially has a role in taking a huge step in that direction. This is a, a slide that's supposed to say introducing gallery. So what is gallery cancer screening? It's a, it's a, it's a newer blood test that's looking for tiny DNA, DNA changes when normal cell tissue becomes cancerous cell tissue and it can screen for 50 different kinds of cancer. It's being described as a liquid biopsy, as a snapshot in time, where if it's negative, you've got a 99% certainty of not having any of those 50 different kinds of cancer at that moment in time. There's no predictive value for a negative test, but it's technically being recommended to consider for anyone over the age of 50. That's when everyone's risk of cancer increases, but particularly if you have a known family history of kinds of cancer, and then to consider doing it on an annual basis not necessarily as a replacement for any current cancer screening guidelines like annual mammograms for females starting at age 40 or periodic colonoscopy starting at age 45, but it's meant to be as an adjunct to try to give ourselves the best chance identifying any one of these cancers, most of which we don't have any ways to screen for. Now, the overall risk of a false positive gallery test appears to be 0.5%, which is pretty good. Now, if you did get a positive gallery test, the positive predictive value in actually meaning you have cancer is only 43%. So a positive test does not necessarily mean that you have cancer, but it certainly raises the question. 
and a positive test would suggest what area of the body do you think the cancer is coming from and would recommend a particular diagnostic study to pursue. If you pursued that study and you don't find anything, maybe it was a false positive. Under that scenario, the plan would be to repeat the gallery screening three to six months later, which then the company pays for. If it's positive again and you look for cancer again and perhaps identify something, then that first test appears to have been a true positive, but may have been at a preclinical stage where the conventional studies we have available to detect cancer couldn't find anything, but with short-term follow-up we were, and potentially at a very early and very treatable stage. I tell patients, I think we might be on the frontier of what we're able to do from an early cancer detection standpoint. Now, as a newer test, it's not covered by insurance. Ordinarily, it's $949 because we as a practice have been ordering it so much, the company is now allowing our patients to get it for $799. But you imagine the longer it's around and the more data they accumulate, that insurance companies might start to pick up on this and say, we want to be able to detect cancer early stages too. As it is, there are now some life insurance companies that are starting to offer gallery cancer screening for free to their clients because they see the data and they understand it's in their best interest to keep their clients alive as long as possible. It's an interesting dichotomy between the end game of a life insurance company and the end game of a health insurance company. Um, uh, but what I can tell you is that in June of last year, I had my first positive gallery test in a patient who was 77, came in for his physical, feeling fine, labs fine, no known family history of cancer. His positive gallery test was suggestive of a lymphoid lineage cancer, something like a lymphoma. We got him set up for a CT scan, the neck, the chest, the abdomen, and the pelvis, and he was identified to have an innumerable amount in the large lymph nodes everywhere. Additional lab work confirmed something called mantle cell lymphoma, which can be an aggressive form of lymphoma. He had a bone marrow biopsy, a confirmed bone marrow biopsy, which technically classifies this as stage four mantle cell lymphoma. And in August of last year, he got started on treatment for it, and he's feeling quite well. But I was absolutely mind blown that the only reason we were able to identify the stage four mantle cell lymphoma is because of this gallery test. Uh, seven months ago, he had a follow-up CT scan that showed no evidence of those previously innumerable enlarged lymph nodes. Just an incredible story about the only reason we were able to identify the stage four mantle cell lymphoma is because of this gallery test. Uh, his response to treatment has been beautiful with virtually no side effects. And now a follow-up CT scan shows no evidence of those previously innumerable enlarged lymph nodes. I'm a believer. And yes, the overall risk of a false positive gallery test appears to be 0.5%. But my first positive was a very true positive stage four mantle cell lymphoma. Just mind blown. Um, and, and again, so here I am two years later, 630 tests later, six true positives. And on the flip side, I've also appeared to have four false negatives. My first last October, a year ago, in a 67-year-old female who also came in for her physical. Now, her, her mother passed away of breast cancer in her 50s. So she's been very vigilant about her own breast cancer screening. But when we saw her in October, we did a gallery cancer screening and it was negative. So it appeared to be a 99% certainty not having any of those 50 different kinds of cancer at that moment in time. So some peace of mind. But two months later, she had a routine scheduled mammogram and it showed a new left-sided abnormality that ultimately proved to be a stage one breast cancer. So when we saw her two months prior and we did a, a gallery test and it was negative, that appears to have been a false negative. That doesn't make me any less of a believer in gallery cancer screening because no test is perfect. And gallery is not meant to be a test in isolation. It's meant to be an adjunct to everything we're already supposed to be doing. So thank God she continued to get her annual scheduled mammograms as she ordinarily does. Um, and from my standpoint, um, because it was a stage one, Hormone, hormone receptor positive breast cancer. I wonder to myself if maybe it was such a sort of a relatively low grade indolent early stage cancer that it might not have been secreting as many DNA methylation changes for gallery cancer screening to have picked it up. So maybe the negative gallery test two months prior was a good thing. I mean, when we're looking for these 50 different kinds of cancer, it's a spectrum. All of these cancers share a cancer signal. That's what gallery is able to detect. 
the more aggressive cancers, for instance, pancreatic cancer, produce many more DNA methylation changes. So gallery cancer screening is more sensitive and better at detecting those more aggressive cancers. It's less sensitive and not, a good de- as, not as good at detecting the lower grade, more indolent cancers, and those are the ones that we're perhaps much less concerned about. But if, for instance, pancreatic cancer is present, gallery cancer screening offers an 83% sensitivity at being able to detect it. That's incredible compared to 0% sensitivity of not being able to screen for pancreatic cancer at all. Um, and so we, we understand that no test is perfect, that gallery is not meant to be a test in isolation. Um, I oftentimes get asked, how does this compare to whole body MRI scan? My response is, I haven't been a huge advocate of whole body MRI imaging because invariably you may find incidental abnormalities that may be of no clinical significance that sometimes you don't know what to do with that sometimes might warrant further evaluations, procedures, biopsies, potential complications and it may end up being nothing. So oftentimes those findings might be nonspecific. But I've been much more of an advocate for gallery cancer screening because you're looking for cancer signal. And if it's positive, it tells you what kind of cancer and it tells you where to look. And that the accuracy of their cancer signal origin prediction is 89%. Uh, And again, the proof is in the pudding, 630 tests later, six true positives. uh, I think it's incredible stuff. Um, now, when we talk about cost and access, uh, I mentioned to you that ordinarily it's $949 um, that in the span of a year, because we've been ordering it so much, the cost has come down slightly already. Medicare just approved to pay for a clinical trial called REACH, which is enrolling 50,000 of their Medicare beneficiaries to offer gallery cancer screening as an adjunct to everything they're already supposed to be doing to see if Medicare can prove to themselves that they can detect more cancers and perhaps at earlier stages. So we might be one step closer to Medicare paying for something like this, and then one step closer to private insurance companies following along, and then one step closer uh, to this becoming much more widely available to everyone that we believe deserves access and and to to have access uh, and be aware that something like this is available. there's a, a, an NHS trial going on in the UK that enrolled 145,000 patients or citizens. Um, now in the UK, they only have three cancer screening guidelines and they're only able to capture 6% of the cancers that their citizens are dying from. Um, and this is a several year trial and the, the data should be available in 2026. Um, but we should all be eagerly awaiting the results of that trial Um, because if it's as promising as we believe it should be, then the UK may roll this out as a national cancer screening guideline. And then that may be only supportive evidence for our our efforts here in the States uh, from a routine cancer screening standpoint. Um, Now, this patients in this particular conference may be interested to know that, that the sensitivity of being able to detect melanoma is not great, maybe 46%. Um, but maybe 46% may be better than not being able to screen outside of your routine skin checks with your dermatologists and your surgical oncologists and PET scans and um, chest x-rays. Um, so might this be a consideration for an adjunctive tool to everything else you're already supposed to be doing? Because if God forbid melanoma was going to recur, might it be able to be detectable? understanding that no test is perfect. Um, But that's not the intended use patient population. I mean, the intended use patient population is in screening everyone over the age of 50, because again, that's when everyone's risk of cancer increases. Um, But you recognize that there may be many more clinical utilities to this kind of technology. I also want to sort of compare or sort of contrast uh, gallery cancer screening with, you guys might be familiar with Cologuard stool tests as a form of colon cancer screening. Now, Cologuard has a 92% sensitivity of being able to detect colon cancer. The risk of a false positive Cologuard is 13%. So a positive Cologuard test does not necessarily mean someone has colon cancer, it just means you have to have a colonoscopy. 
but Cologuard right now is a grade A United States Preventive Services Task Force, USPSTF recommendation that for anyone over the age of 45, you could either consider doing a screening colonoscopy or consider doing a Cologuard stool test as long as you're doing something. Uh, and, but, and then now in the last month or so, there's a new FDA approved blood test to screen specifically for colon cancer called SHIELD. And it's a similar cell-free DNA technology, but it's only looking for colon cancer. And the sensitivity of SHIELD in being able to detect colon cancer is 83%. Now, the overall risk of a false positive SHIELD test appears to be 10%. Um, but this is now FDA approved as about uh, recently of, uh, about a month ago. And because it's FDA approved, Medicare pays for it. Um, but when you can you compare a false positive Colgard rate of 13% with a false positive shield rate of 10% to a false positive gallery rate of 0.5%, uh, gallery seems to be an order of magnitude better than what we're already considering standard of care. Uh, and you're able to screen for 50 different kinds of cancer as, a, as opposed to screening for these individual cancers. Um, and I do really wonder if this has to be a paradigm shift where you go from screening for these five individual cancers the screening individuals for the multitude of cancers that all of us are going to be at risk for. Um, and so I'm trying to shout from my two-story rooftop and anybody who's willing to, to listen. Uh, so that's why I'm so grateful to be here um, to again share my experience. I'll close by saying that as a primary, uh, we all know the toll that cancer can take not only on patients, but on families and loved ones. As a primary care physician, if God forbid one of my patients is gonna get some kind of cancer. I just look at gallery cancer screening as offering ourselves an opportunity to capture it as early as humanly possible so that it's as treatable as possible with the least amount of toxicity. Why wouldn't I want that for my patients? Why wouldn't I want that for my families and loved ones? I imagine you, would, might, you may wanna consider that for yourselves and for your families and loved ones as well. Go Dodgers. <laughs> Are there questions for Dr. Sue? Go ahead. Full disclosure, um, Dr. Sue has been my doctor for many years <laughs> and has done a fantastic job. Doctor, um, you indicated uh, in your presentation that this uh, test, the gallery test is a uh, I guess at 949 is, is not something which is usually paid by insurance company. And you mentioned in one of your examples that you had found a, a particular kind of a, a cancer and you immediately took such and such a test and such and such a test and such and such a test. Are the tests which are a result of finding the cancer, are they tests which are reimbursable or which insurance companies will pay for? That's an excellent question. So if I, if I can get back to my, my first positive test, that was in a 77 year old showing a lymphoid lineage cancer signal origin. Now the first recommendation was actually to do a PET scan. And as many people in this room are aware, getting a PET scan can be very difficult. Uh, and to get that covered, even if you have cancer, can be very difficult. So I was a little gun shy and actually ordering a PET scan right off the bat. So we referred him for a regular CT scan of the neck, the chest, the abdomen and pelvis to begin with. Uh, and he was um, uh, insured by Medicare. And Medicare typically doesn't give huge pushback. Um, and so there wasn't an issue at getting that imaging study covered. And similarly, there wasn't an issue getting the additional laboratory diagnostic evaluation covered either. Um, the laboratory evaluation included something called a flow cytometry. Um, which did uh, confirm mantle cell lymphoma. Now, separately, I, I did have a Blue Cross PPO uh, insured patient uh, who was 63, also showing evidence of a lymphoid lineage cancer. Similarly, we referred him for the same CT scan in the neck, chest, abdomen, and pelvis. And that Blue Cross PPO health insurance uh, didn't uh, didn't have an issue with covering the CT scan of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis, but for some reason they denied the CT scan of the neck. So he ended up needing to pay cash for the CT scan of the neck. Um, but then I became aware that that Grail, the company that does gallery cancer screening, 
is able to provide letters of medical necessity with all of their data uh, that can then be submitted to insurance that can help support uh, the recommendation to have any particular diagnostic evaluation covered. Um, and you know, the longer that this is around and the more data they accumulate, again, uh, I think at some point the data is gonna become undeniable. And so my hope is that at some point we can list a positive gallery test as a reason to order a test and for that to eventually be covered. That was really my question that I should have put to you much more clearly. Which, <laughs> no, no, which it was, was excellently asked which question. Was, is the, uh, you know, can you use that for a reason to present to an insurance company? Yeah. Right, and so I don't think we're at that point yet. Um, you know, laboratory developed tests uh, historically have not needed to be under the purview of, a, of the FDA. That just changed six months ago. But despite that, uh, Grail has always had the intention of seeking FDA approval. Um, and they've been around for about three and a half years now, and they're accumulating a robust amount of clinical information and data to then submit their application to FDA. My understanding is that they're awaiting some legislation to validate multi-cancer early detection uh, as, as a valid tool because it's the first of its kind. Um, so if and when that happens, then the FDA application process is going to proceed. And again, if we look at and we compare the 0.5% risk of a false positive test with a 13% false positive Cologuard and a 10% false positive shield test, which are already FDA approved, it seems to be an order of magnitude better than what we're already doing from a standard of care standpoint. Now, getting back to one of the, the statistics I presented that if you did get a positive gallery test, the positive predictive value in actually meeting with cancer is only 43%. Patients will oftentimes say, well, that's not great. So I get a positive gallery test, I have a less than one in two chance that it actually means I have cancer. Well, what's the positive predictive value of an abnormal mammogram? 4.4%. What's the positive predictive value of a positive Cologuard stool test in actually meeting that patient has colon cancer? 3.7%. So 43% positive predictive value of, a, of an abnormal positive gallery test in actually meaning someone has cancer is also an order of magnitude seemingly better than what we're already doing from a standard of care standpoint. And again, I want to reiterate, this is not not in any way to minimize the importance of routine cancer screening measures, because we know that those matter. Uh, and this is not meant to be an adjunct. I, sorry, this is not meant to be a replacement. This is meant to be an adjunct to everything we're already currently doing. Um, we're just trying to give ourselves the best chance of doing it better. Yeah. To whom is that shared with other than the patient? Does that go to the insurance company, potential life insurers? Curious how that might, that information is out there. I'm just wondering where the else Information that you may have cancer? Yeah, I mean, it's not, yes, exactly. It's like the predisposition, but does that information get shared on beyond the patient? Well, it's not a predisposition to cancer. So oh. this is looking for actual cancer signal. Okay. So, so this is different, for instance, from genetic screening, which is looking for like an underlying genetic mutation that we know might be associated with a high risk of cancer, but doesn't necessarily mean someone is going to get cancer. Um, but um, so this information doesn't necessarily get automatically shared with insurance companies. Um, but you know, if someone were to apply for life insurance, um, it, then a life insurance company requests medical records, then the totality of your medical records would then be submitted to a life insurance company. Um, uh, but, but right now, I mean, I, again, I think that the idea of consideration for gallery cancer screening is that if God forbid you have cancer, that we would be trying to give ourselves the best chance of identifying it as early as possible. Um, that it doesn't necessarily mean that you have cancer, but it's kind of part of the reason why we do any of this stuff. Uh, it's, it's like, where does the information go that, you know, if you have an abnormal mammogram, that's presumably potentially gonna be able to be sent to your insurance company too. Um, so it's, a, it's kind of a similar idea. Thank you. Hi, this is from an online participant. Um, does Galleria make uh, recommendations for treatment? Any recommendations for treatment? 
Does Calary make any recommendation for treatment? No, I don't think so. So uh, uh, as I mentioned, the, the intended use patient population is for technically for people over the age of 50. So it's not meant to be considered for anyone under the, under the age of 21, because that it wasn't, that was, that's a patient population that it wasn't studied in. It's not intended to be used in pregnant patients. It's not technically intended to be used in patients with active cancer undergoing active treatment. Um, uh, and, but as a, as a screening tool where if you do gallery cancer screening, it comes back positive and it tells you what kind of cancer you take a look and you find something, um, and just as you, if you were to be diagnosed with any kind of cancer, with any cancer screening measure, or perhaps by the time you start showing symptoms, um, then the oncologists or radiation oncologists or surgical oncologists would then um, weigh in about the best way to go about treating that particular cancer that's identified. But the gallery cancer, the gallery cancer screening in and of itself shouldn't necessarily um, affect treatment recommendations over time. Eric, um, thanks for a nice little talk. Um, I would like to know what's recommended or what you're doing, of course, for patients with negative gallery tests. How often do you test them? So, so sure. So, so gallery cancer screening is meant to be considered on an annual basis. Um, and, and again, because it's considered a, a liquid biopsy as a snapshot in time, where if it's negative, you don't have you have a ninety nine percent chance of not having any of those fifty different kinds of cancer at that moment in time, but that there's no predictive value. There is some data to support the recommendation to do it on an annual basis. There was an American Cancer Society study from several years ago, completely separate from Grail, uh, that looked at three hundred thousand patients who were at relatively low risk of cancer, ages thirty to sixty five, mostly female, non smokers. They drew a whole bunch of their blood and they banked it and they monitored them over the course of three years for any incident development of cancers. When Grail became aware of this study, they asked to access some of that bank blood. And what they found was that for the people that were diagnosed with cancer, the gallery cancer signal might have been detectable on average of 323 days before the cancer was actually diagnosed, essentially a year. So there's some data to support their recommendation to do it on an annual basis. How long does it take for the results to come back? Absolutely. So yes, um, primarily it involves a kit with two blood vials. Um, results take about two weeks to come back and then a, a separate invoice is sent directly to the patient for uh, the nine, ordinarily $949 directly to them. Now, Gallery or Grail has partnered with Quest. So now there's an option for physicians to submit an order online for a kit to be sent directly to your home. And you could take it to any local quest nas nationally to have those two blood vials drawn and the results then get sent to the ordering physician. Uh, Grail now offers also free, a, a free mobile phlebotomist to come to your home to have those two blood vials drawn for free. Um, and so there are a number of options uh, in terms of being able to have those two blood vials drawn.